Hello, my name is Eric, and today I want to talk about a topic that's, as they say, uh, taboo in the men's world, and the topic is erectile dysfunction, ED. It's a dirty word. Welcome to the craziness that lives inside my head. As you know, I, not keeping it a secret, I had, or maybe still have, excuse me, prostate, prostate cancer. I have been off the hormone treatment now. Um, my last shot was in January, so it's going on a year. Um, the doctor got me on a Cialis, I guess that's another form of Viagra, as a treatment. You could say now another treatment. One of the, one of the causes of radiology which I, I've gotten the radiology and the hormone treatment, is you become, this dirty word, impotent. Or you develop erectile dysfunction. And I remember before I agree to go through these um, treatments for my prostate cancer, I Google the outcome the after effects or the side of sorry, the side effects of going through this treatment. And I talked it over with my older friends and they said to me, oh, what are you worrying about sex for? It's crazy. It's, it's about your life. You got to worry about your life. And I said, yeah, it's fine. I agree to that. But what is life without sex? Of course, they thought I was stupid. You're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, let's be honest. Um, what is life? I mean, I have to admit when I was on the hormone treatment, I lost all interest in sex. It did, uh, I didn't get me in the mood. I lost all interest. I mean, I could stare at certain things and nothing would happen. But now that I'm off the treatment and I'm no longer taking um, the radiology treatment, Hopefully, I'm recovering. Uh, it, it appears that the prostate cancer is gone. I'm being tested every three months. I guess I would always be tested every three months. So now I'm, I told the doctor, my urologist, I said, you know, I would like to try to see if I can get back in the saddle again. <laughs> so he got me on Cialis. Um, I think it's... Uh, it's a, it's a Cialis therapy, I think, to get you get me back into the mood. But why? We, but, but I was thinking about it, and a friend of mine had mentioned this. Um, he Googled these statistics, and he would say, "Well, you know, thirty million American men has ED." I said, "Okay, I mean, <laughs> yeah." And then he said, and I looked it up. That's true. 30 million American men has ED. 18 million of them are between the ages of 16 and 20. And I'm like, 16 and 20? Now, back in the 70s, I shouldn't say so. I'm going to take that back. Back in the 90s, um, I had friend, I had a couple of friends in their 70s, and they moved out of New York, moved down to Georgia. And they were complaining um, they were in their seventies, of course. They were picking up young boys down in Georgia, and their complaint their complaint was, they say these young boys they can't get out on. I said, what are you talking about? He said, no, I mean not every boy they picked up, but they said that once in a while they pick up these young boys that cannot get a hard on. And of course, my my first my first question is. Are they drinking? Are they drugging? Because if they're drinking and drugging, I mean, that do uh, inhibit youth to to produce a hard-on. 
and one admitted that he has one boy that he would love to, you know what, but can't get a heart on. But every time the boy comes to his house, he buys him beer. I said, well, you're enticing him with the wrong thing. I mean, maybe you should try enticing him sober, you know. But according to the statistics, this is not unusual. I mean, that's, that's wow. I mean, that's unheard of. But I do remember when I was uh, had a personal trainer who was 25 years old. And this personal trainer said to me that he know guys his age. And he was 25. He said he do know guys his age who cannot um, get a hard on, who cannot get an erection. But he blames it on they were on steroids, you know, to get that, that body. They work out and try to get, you know, muscular, that, that body. And they was on steroids, and it was the steroids that was doing it. Okay, when I was back then, when I had a personal training, com coming from a 25-year-old, I said, yeah, I mean, I could see that. I can't see 18 million of them doing it, but I could see quite a few guys who was into looking big and into working out and lifting weights, you know, taking steroids. But, but it can't be, I'm, I'm sitting here saying, it can't be 18 million. But according to the statistics that I got off of Google, 18 million boys between 16 and 20 has a problem getting an erection. I didn't read. I didn't. I didn't go into detail reading why. I mean, they think it has to do with diet. They think it has to do with a lot of things: the diet, the drugs, the alcohol, and and you know. I mean, I do know. I do remember back in the seventies when if you pick up a drunk, nobody wants to pick up somebody who's so drunk. You take them home and they they go straight to sleep, and there's nothing you could do with it because they're out of it, you know. And um, I. I've heard stories where guys would say, well, especially guys who are in the closet, they go, they say, say, well, if I'm going to pick up somebody, I, I got to be stoned. I got to have this. I got to have this drug or that drug in order for me to have sex with you and all this nonsense. And then they take the drug, whatever it is that supposedly to inhibit uh, and break down the inhibition not to have sex with somebody of their own sex. And uh, the same sex, but when they do it, if they do it to the excess, they can't produce. They can't, you know, they can't get an erection. I do remember situations like that back in the seventies, but I am really flawed since I'm gone through it. Um, prior to the therapy, I didn't the hormone therapy for my prostate cancer. I didn't have a problem. Um, the only problem I had, and I have heard just from guys my age when I was younger who was getting older, it took more than just looking at a picture to get aroused. I mean, to, to get your your erection. That has happened prior to um, my hormone treatment. Yes, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't uh, 18, year old, 18 years old anymore. It wasn't like I can think about it and boom, I'm ready to go. It was a situation where it takes it took kissing, hugging, petting. Uh, it definitely took touch. I mean, when I was young, I didn't take touch. I, I could, you could look at somebody and say, "Oh wow, I would like to have that," and boom, you're ready to go. I mean, you get my drift. So, but uh, I'm only reason why I'm thinking about this and talking about it because I also read most men don't talk about it. It's not talked about in our society. ED is a dirty word. Uh, I, when I was on the dating line, I met a guy on the dating line. He said to me, he was, you know, giving me the third degree about sex, which I thought is very, I mean, it's not that unusual. I mean, you do want to see what you're getting yourself into by the time you meet a person. But when he got to the point that he had ED, but... He had a pump. He could pump it up. And he asked me, what do you think about that? And my my answer was, I don't know. I have never been to bed with a man who has to pump it up. And then he asked me again, well, how would you feel if we met? And, you know, because he said that's what he needs to do in order for him to. You know. 
And I, I said, well, we have to try it because I don't know. Well, we never tried it. I mean, I think he just never got back to me. And, and I can understand that. And I mean, if, if a person ever tried it and the person don't know anything about it, you don't want to, you don't want to go to the person's house. You don't want to travel a two hour trip to get to somebody's house and they, you tried it and the person's not interested. Uh, I've heard stories when I, well, I should say I heard stories. I had a friend back in the nineties and he was my age. I was, I I was 45. He was 45, but he had an older boyfriend in the sixties. And he was telling me stories that before they could fool around, he has to pump it up. I never went into details because you know, I'm crazy. When he said he had to pump it up, I'm thinking about it like a bicycle, you know, pump, you know, a bicycle pump, pump it up. It wasn't until a couple of years ago when I started taking the homo treatment, I had another friend who was older than me and we was, we got on this subject and he said, no, it's, you don't pump it up that way. He said, it's, it's built in your scrotum. That's what he said. So I've never, still have never experienced it. But getting back to this ED as a dirty word, I remember when they, the doctor said, mentioned the homo treatment and because uh, I read up on it. And then I was so embarrassed because the nurse was there. It was a female nurse with a male urologist. And I was so nervous, I said, and I said to him about having sex afterward. I was, you know, I was embarrassed because there was a female in the room. I, if it wasn't for the female, I wouldn't have been embarrassed. And uh, he, he was telling me all these things we can do and that we can put you on this um, regimen and we can do this, we can do that. And he said, if you want, we can an implant. And that turned me off completely. I don't, I told him, no, forget it. I don't want to implant. I don't, I, I just don't want it. This, just the thought of doing that is just, you know. But I just want to talk about, or finish talking about, I should just ready to close up because I, I got my point, my point across. The point across is more people, more guys, I guess, according to what I read, more guys are getting ED than, than I thought. I mean, for me, before I had my, my, my cancer, I'm thinking only old men get ED. Because at the time, I was, well, I remember in my 40s, they claim it starts in your 40s. Well, I had more sex in my 40s, 50s, and 60s than I did in my 20s. That's because I was losing weight. I lost, once I lost the weight, it was, you know, that, you know I couldn't believe it. And then once you had get, you know how it is. Once you get that taste of people want to have sex with you, you, on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. And, and um, so I didn't have that experience when I was in my 20s. I had a friend of mine who, who couldn't believe, uh, I remember I was in my 20s and we were talking about fooling around and he couldn't believe, you're not a whore? I said, I try to be a whore in my 20s. It's hard to be a, it's hard to be a whore in your 20s if people don't want to have sex with you because you're 430 pounds. But I did have more sex. Then in my 60s, I started, I started going to the gym at age 58, got me a personal trainer, 25-year-old personal trainer at age 58. Uh, by the time I was, by the time I was 62, I had gotten down to close to um, uh, 200 pounds. Uh, when I started that journey with the personal trainer, I was 380 and I got down to 200. So uh, what I lost, 180 pounds, something like that. Yeah, close to 200 pounds I lost. So, anyway. That's my story. That's my take on this ED. Um, nobody wants to talk about it. Especially especially if you're a male, you want to talk about it. You want to be, at 80, you want to be very virile. But these things happen. And I'm dealing with it now. If you, say, if, if you ask me, how did I feel about it when I was in my 20s? Yeah, I, I couldn't even think that then in my 20s. 20s and the 70s, thinking about being with a guy who can't, can't, can't get an erection was not something that you thought about. Now that I am the age that I am, yes. 
I do think about it because I'm going through this now. And I'm looking on, I'm Googling a lot of stuff and seeing a lot of things and being quite surprised because not many, not many guys is going to go and say, hey, you want to go out with me? I got ED. Mind you now, I will leave, leave this, I'm going to leave you on this note. I might have made a podcast. I really had had, I've had a guy who was, uh, who had ED and I think I talked about him. In 2020, when everybody was locked in, I'm a, I was whoring around. Um, yeah, he had ED. And it was an, an experience. When I mean by the experience, um, it wasn't well, anything like this, an experience. The thing was, he was quite huge. I mean, I heard guys use the term monster dick. Well, he had one. The only problem is he couldn't get it up. And it, it hung there like one great large piece of meat that just hung. And then I remember thinking, boy, I'm glad I, I'm glad I don't have that problem. <laughs> what I do now, thank you for listening to the craziness that lives inside my head. Can you dig it?